Senator Tim Scott got some of that by going on The View today, and he was asked by uh, Sonny Hostin uh, about uh, systemic racism. Here's how that went. Senator, I, I am actually happy that you're here. We, we, we have some things in common. You grew, up, you grew up in a single family household, single mother household. I grew up with both of my parents, but raised in the Bronx projects amidst a lot of poverty and, and, and uh, violence. And you are the first black senator elected in the South since the Reconstruction. That would be about, I think, about 114 years. Yet you say that your life disproves uh, left, leftist lies. And, yes. and my question to you is, I'm the exception, right? You're the exception. Maybe even Miss Whoopi Goldberg is the exception. Oh, she's but, definitely the but, exception. But we are not the rule. <laughs> and so when it comes to racial inequality, it persists in, in five core aspects of life in the U.S. Economics, education, health care, criminal justice, and housing. At nearly every turn, these achievements were fought, threatened, and erased, most often by white violence. You have indicated that you don't believe in systemic racism. What is your definition of systemic racism? Let me ask, answer the uh, question that you've answered. Does it or does it even exist yeah. in your mind? Let me, let me uh, answer the question this way. One of the things I, I think about, and one of the reasons why I'm on the show is because of the comments that were made, frankly, on this show, that the only way for a young African-American kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule. That is a dangerous, offensive disgusting message to send to our young people today that the only way to succeed is by being the exception. I will tell you that if my life is the exception, uh, I can't imagine. But, I can't but it imagine, is. But it's not, actually. Here's, here's, it's been here's 114 my, years. Yeah, so, so the fact of the matter is we've had an African-American president, African-American uh, vice president. We've had two African-Americans to be secretaries of the state. Uh, in my home city, uh, the police chief is an African-American who's now running for mayor. The head of the Highway Patrol for South Carolina is an African-American. Still in, 19, in 1975, um, there was about 15% unemployment in the African-American community for the first time in the history of the country. It's under 5%. 40% homelessness and 50 of, of African-Americans, yet 13% of the folks yet, in our community. Yet 13 they, I, of the population. You had a chance to ask the question. I know that I've watched mm -hmm. you on the show that you like people to be deferential and respectful, so I'm going to do the that same thing. That is true. So here's what I'm going to suggest. I'm going to suggest the fact of the matter is that progress in America is palpable. It can be measured in generations. I look back at the fact that my grandfather, born in 1921 in Sally, South Carolina, when he was on a on a sidewalk, a white person was coming, he had to step off and not make eye contact. That man believed then, with some doubt now, in the goodness of America, because he believed that having faith in God, mm -hmm. faith in himself, and faith in what the future could hold for his kids, would unleash opportunities in ways that you, you cannot imagine. Every kid today can look just change the stations and see how much progress has been made in this country. ABC, NBC, CBS, ESPN, CNN, Fox News all have African-American and Hispanic hosts. So what I'm suggesting is that the yesterday's exception is today's rule. And for us to so suggest... America has met its promise. No, of course, the, the concept of America is that we are going to become a more perfect union. But in fact, the challenges that we face 50 years ago and 60 years ago should not be the same challenges that we face today. And here's the way that you, you measure that. When my mother was born, about 10% of African Americans got a high school degree, wow. diploma. Today, it's over 90%. When you look at the income, when you look at the income success that That's we've had. That's an HBCU stat. Well, listen, HBCU stat is a good okay. one because one of the reasons why I took the funding for HBCUs to the highest level in the history of the country and then I helped make it permanent is because I believe that education is the closest thing to magic in America. So I'm about making sure that our kids have as many opportunities to succeed as possible. It's one of the reasons why. I need I did, an opportunity to well, succeed me, me, <laughs> because I have to go to Brent. Oh, they're we begging. Have more time, to, they're begging. They're, you're have coming. More I'm, just, coming back. I'm just getting started. I, I believe all. All people can see the success that I've had. You know, I, I, I sat and I listened to everything you said. Yes. And I wonder why these conversations don't seem to be held with Republicans. All of the exceptional stuff you're talking about. And one of the reasons we continue to have new exceptionalism is because every time folks make 40 steps forward, they get dragged 40 steps back. So how do we, as a... As a as a nation, because as a nation, we, we seemingly get on the right track and then we go backwards. So you as a black man and as 
one of the other two black. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Six yeah. senators. Yeah, yeah. Raphael or, Warren. Yeah, Raphael, that's right. uh, three now. The three. 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 We, 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 we still count Cory Booker. Okay, we got Cory and Warren so, on one so side and me on the other side. That's so. That's three. Yes. But you yourself have talked about when the police stopped you. Absolutely. And I, so how can you get your party to stop trying to stop? the progression that people are making. Yeah, so, that's what I complained about when, when I spoke about yeah. I want you to come out and say, listen, the Republicans have these issues, so. Yeah, I think yeah. humans have these issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the issue of discrimination that I have faced, I assume you face as well, uh -huh. is an issue of the heart. Mm -hmm. It's not Republicans or Democrats. Frankly, both sides of the aisle can do a better job on the issue of race. And frankly, my side of the aisle, I think, is doing a fabulous job of making progress. The all right, y'all, so, okay, that's a whole lot of, so let, let me get, do this right here. First of all, Senator Tim Scott never actually answered the question that Sonny raised about systemic racism. What he did was, he brought up all of these little individual anecdotal stories, which we all know, that's how you actually avoid. See, if you say, my mama and my daddy uh, and me, and my cousin, that's four people. Systemic means system, okay? Literally last week, Vice President Kamala Harris talked about what the Biden administration is doing to combat systemic racism and bias in the algorithms when it comes to the valuation of homes. Yep, that's systemic. Systemic is when we know how black-owned media is being frozen out of the $322 billion being spent annually in the advertising industry. Oh yeah, we get 0.5 to 1%. That's called systemic. Systemic is when you look at the disproportion of the people who are on death row and who committed, who were convicted and put on death row for crimes they did not commit, how many of them are black? That's systemic. And see, then what Senator Tim Scott then does is this cute little game of, we have a black sheriff. We have a black mayor. We have a black this. Let me help you all out. When Thurgood Marshall became the first African-American on the Supreme Court, racism did not just magically evaporate in the criminal justice system. It didn't. When Doug Wilder became the first African-American governor elected since Reconstruction, hell, that didn't eliminate racism in Virginia. You show me the first black mayor of a city, doesn't mean discrimination in that city somehow went poof, it's now gone. Show me the first black CEO, I'll show you you still have fundamental problems with discrimination in companies. See, so what Tim Scott likes to do, y'all, is this cute little black conservative dance. And that is, look at all the progress we've made. Yes, we all acknowledge that. We all acknowledge Sonny sitting on the desk and Whoopi sitting on the desk, but it wasn't until two years ago when ABC News got their first black president. Has Disney ever had a black CEO, Tim? Nope. Are we actually seeing Significant numbers of African Americans in corporate America, in many of these places, no. Federal government, Tim, $560 billion spent every single year on contracts. African Americans get 1.67% of all federal contracts. Want we'll to talk about systemic racism there? In lending, in finance. We can go on and on and on. See, but the rally is Tim, Tim Scott does not want to deal with that because that doesn't play well with his white Republican base. And that's why he gives these, I mean, a girl like me, I mean, look at what I've done. Look at what I was able to achieve. Yes, Tim, <laughs> that's you. But the reality is, as Sonny stated, we know that there are exceptions. And exceptions don't mean that, well, a few of us, when you still are talking to black people who were the first in the generation to go to college, Tim also talked about, oh my goodness, there used to be 10% of African Americans who received a diploma, high school diploma. Today, it's 90%. Answer this question for me, Tim. 
Why is it that an African-American with a college degree makes less than a white person with a high school diploma? Come on. Tim, I'll wait. I'll wait, Tim. Then Tim Scott lied. That's why I voted. I made funding for HBCUs permanent. That is a lie. Tim Scott is repeating the Donald Trump lie. What was made permanent was $85 million. Player, it's 107 HBCUs. So you did not make permanent funding permanent. You made a program, a one program, and actually it wasn't you, it was, it was representing all my Adams who pushed that through. Thank you. So can we please stop this lie, this Republican lie about Trump made permanent funding for HBCUs. That is a lie. And Tim Scott lied. And so please, if you're gonna go on these shows, don't sit here and play, folks. Because, I, I, Tim, I would love for you to come here and have this conversation. <laughs> but you know I'm going to fact check your ass in real time. Because you can't lie here like you did on The View. Real quick from our panel before I go to the break and then go to our Fit Live Win segment. Uh, I'll start uh, with you, uh, Renita. What Tim Scott is doing is so offensive, particularly to black people. And it's like I said a couple of weeks ago, Tim Scott basically is just saying anything bad that is happening to black people, it's all about their attitude. And so if you think about it, um, how many times have we seen it to where banks were, we find out banks were charging black um, people needing mortgages um, a higher interest rate or charging them more fees? So my question to Tim Scott would be, what type of attitude do I need to have in order to make sure that I am not being charged more by banks? Um, we talked about the shooting at Mother Manuel earlier in the show. Hey, Tim, what type of attitude do black people need to have to make sure that they can go to church and not be shot up by a white supremacists? Like what he's saying is just so offensive if you actually have lived as a black person in this country, because we know that there are so many things that happen to us and that can happen to us that cannot happen to other communities. And it has nothing to do with our attitude. It's just systemic racism. Julian. You know, he exhibited his extreme ignorance by not answering Sonny's question, but he can't answer the question because he doesn't know the answer. He walks around. Uh, he, that was basically the reflection of his campaign or whatever. When he announced that he was running for president, he says, I am, you know, I'm an antidote to the liberal lies because I have succeeded. Well, let's look at things we've talked about in this program already. Black unemployment, it's down, but we still have a gap between black male uh, participation and white. We could, go, we could go through item by item by item. But at the end of the day, Tim Scott is, is, is playing games uh, with black America's future. Because if he wants to just be uh, Bubba the buffoon, that's fine. But he should not be running around talking about there's no racism. This uh, plays to a narrative that anybody with a brain knows it's just not a true narrative. I, I, I abhor, you know, what he's doing out there. But certainly, you said earlier, Roland, that he lied. What's new? Republicans would know the truth if it gave him a million-dollar check. I mean, they, they, they have an aversion to the truth. So he's no more than your basic Republican. Uh, Avis? Yeah, he knows how to play the game to stay where he is. I mean, yes, he's the first uh, senator from from South Carolina in over 100 years, but and he has been able to win re-election, but he didn't get there initially through an election. He got there through an appointment. And so, you know, it, had that not happened, he may not have ever been there in the first place. Uh, I, I would also say that he, all of his accomplishments that he ticked off, he sort of left off the fact that as far as my interpretation of the situation, he pulled the old bait and switch when it came to the Justice and Policing Act. You know, he was the one who was supposed to make sure that he was negotiating in good faith in order to make sure it got the, through the finish line. And at the last minute, uh, he comes back with other um, other sort of requirements, which actually killed the bill. And so, you know, the bottom line is that he is doing what he needs to do to be in that position from the state that he is from and in the party that he is in. He knows the dance that he needs to uh, undertake, and that's exactly what he's doing. 